Hello plant friends! My name is Jimmy. I'm a doctor and tropical plant hobbyist in LA and this channel is about plants. So this is another part of the Jake series. This is favorites number 21 through 25. If you haven't caught the other episodes, you know, catch them. You know, if you like rare plants, if you like looking at amazing plants, pretty plants, yeah. So this is a favorite. Again, it's funny. Oh, yeah. I keep talking about how I don't like allocation. Yeah, I, I think you've shown me like four, allocation. four already. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a cuprea, uh, definitely a spider mite magnet. How are you supposed um, to say it? I always say cuprea, but then I I mispronounce like everything. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not one of these cuprea. people that's super strict about yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. And I know that there are some people that are. Um, I, I oh, find yeah, these to be just geez. really, really stunning. Yeah, mine are a, a lot smaller than yours, but this is woo. it's a special one for sure. Um, I don't know how. I wish that I could tell you what I've done uh, that's kind of created this perfect circular shaped leaves and yeah. I don't have an answer to that, but I just, I really like this specimen a lot. And, um, yeah, this is, uh, oof, yeah. Do you feel that all the alocasias have, do you, do you feel like there's any particularly different alocasia? I feel like for me, they've all sort of just, the cares have been the same. There's not really one that's like more nitpicky or more finicky than the others. Uh, that's not been the case for me. So I find that like some of the dragons, uh -huh. like the silver dragon, my silver dragon really seems to like much higher humidity. Oh, okay. Um, so that's why it's living inside that shelf. Yeah. Um, these guys seem to, to be a little bit easier to manage. Uh -huh. um, like the silver dragon and the green dragon seem less prone to spider mites. These cupreas seem to be like oh, really? super <laughs> prone to spider mites. Yeah. Um, to yeah. the point where I just proactively spray them like once every week or once every two weeks with, you know, my, my spider mite magic. <laughs> yeah, no, they're, um, they're definitely, they're definitely eye catching though. So definitely I, probably worth the. So let me move this cause I'm just, I'm not going to move stuff, but I'll show you a few things. Oh yeah. Here. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. This is, this is definitely one of, one of the favorites uh, that you have. So I have two, I, I there are two this. things that you're looking at over here. I should probably move some of this stuff out of the way. So you can actually see it. I mean, I don't, it's even hard to, to capture this size even on, even on video. So, I mean, so here's, let me see if I can capture your ceiling. All right, so there's your ceiling. I assume it's like a typical eight, eight foot ceiling. So you have uh, basically, yeah, it's like six feet or so of this Dubia. So this is my, my Dubia. <laughs> it's in a little teeny I mean, yeah, six like, inch pot. This is a six inch pot, yeah. Yeah. Do you do you um do anything for the board? Like do you mist or do no. you water? You don't do anything. None of that, no. You probably just have enough ambient humidity that it uh it's enough for it, but maybe. Geez. Yeah. I mean I've had to like, you know, continue like whole, to glue several growth, boards growth together. Board on it too. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's growing pretty pretty well. It's a nice, uh, yeah, a nice I mean, people specimen. don't. Yeah, it's this is this is huge, right? Yeah, I mean, and it's really grabbed on the board. I've started like this aerial root. I decided to give a little bit of moss <laughs> to and to get some extra moisture there. Yeah, but, I mean that. Yeah, that's a that's a six inch pot, right? And I and, think that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that's a six inch pot. I dread. Uh, I mean, sooner or later, I'm gonna have to repot it, and yeah. I have no idea how I'm gonna do that. I know that I'm. I'm, yeah, I don't even think that there's that much down there. I, I actually don't even know if you do need to repot it. I mean, sooner or later. Uh, what my goal is with this, I mean, one of the things that's interesting about these plants is the juvenile leaves are yeah. completely different yep. than the mature yeah. leaves. Yeah. Um, I've seen a couple of people just selling specimens lately that are just the mature leaves. Um, but I'd really love it if I could get this plant to the point where it actually gives me mature leaves from this plant we'll yeah. see i don't i don't know enough about the the species to know quite how tall or how how, how mature the plant be. would have to yeah. get in order yeah. to give them but by I mature mean, leaves you're you're saying about the fenestrations yeah so and... apparently if you, if you kind of research the species uh what happens once it gets to a certain point of maturity it stops shingling. Yep. Um, it stops having these plants, these leaves that have the white pattern on them, yeah. the variegation, and it just kind of gives these big elephant ear sized, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. just green leaves that have, you know, fenestrations in them, yep. which 
from a collector's standpoint, you know, these are significantly more attractive, uh, and so they're, these tend to be yeah. more sought after. But well, they're more they're more recognizable. Sure. Once it gets really yeah. mature, no one really knows. You know, it's like hard right. to tell from something else. So the other thing that you're seeing on this shelf that is a favorite of mine is I love Huperzia. Um, some Assume. people call them tassel ferns, um, and so you know that's what kind of all oh, these guys oh, are. They're really, really tactile. Uh, oh, I love yeah. touching these guys. Oh, and, they're like yeah. um, Christmas tree. Kind of. This right? one is. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. Um, but all of them feel a little bit different and. Um, oh yeah, this yeah, one. They this, hang upside down. And, this one feels like um, you know those like those yeah like it smells like a pine tree almost a little bit. kind yeah, of yeah, yeah totally. Yeah. Um, these guys like a lot of humidity. Oh. Um, they are epiphytes, and so you'll see that I have oh. them in several different various baskets where they're actually hanging upside down. It's weird because um, I I never would have guessed that they they knew they do need a lot of humidity. They but, do. Yeah. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like from the from the looking at the leaves or touching the leaves, it doesn't seem like that would be the case. But but yeah, I mean yeah. This is the one that I'm kind glad, of started glad, my love with it. I'm, like, I, I'm glad I don't grow these. But, oh, yeah, you have a lot of different varieties. I do. Yeah, I really like these guys a lot. These guys are like a rope shape. Oh, uh, yeah. And they're neat. I take them into the shower with me. Oh, I see. The water I'm in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Is there, like, one type that's more specifically, like, harder to find than others? Or, no, or hotter. I mean, They're I think that, the same. Everyone just yeah, has the, different these types. seem to be kind of the more common one. I think this one is called Globellii. Okay. Um, you see a good amount of this. I mean, this is a pretty big one, yeah. uh, but you do see a fair amount of that. Um, no, I mean, I think, I don't, I don't know that I would classify any of these as being, I mean, they're, they're Asian epiphytes and, yeah. uh, you know, some are, are harder to find than others, but I don't know that any of them are like classified as like yeah. super rare i do have to put a warning out um the future content or the content that is coming up um, viewer discretion is advised okay. we're sharing his begonia collection okay not something i know much about so um, i hope you guys who are really really into begonias i hope you guys really appreciate this and also you know if if you're not into begonias and you're thinking oh you know what's what's so cool about them um i hope this will shed some light into that um uh, and then i'd say so the last thing i guess i would show you that i'm really interested in lately is i've gotten really interested in begonias i'm just gonna set this down oh yeah and so these are all um, like the really tender Asian begonias. Um, this guy here is kind of what started my love with these guys. It's called, literally, it's called a Begonia Darth Vaderiana. Oh, yes. I think I've heard yeah. about this guy, yeah. Um, really challenging to grow. Um, these are probably a flat of my most challenging plants right now. Um, they're really interesting that they need a, a fair amount of humidity. Uh, but what's interesting about them is water cannot touch the leaves. What? Yes. <laughs> so how they grow in nature, I have no idea. If, yeah, second, how do they grow in nature? If, if water gets on the leaves, they, they do this, where they literally just melt away to nothing. Um, quickly. What? Very, very quickly. Um, so, you know, you, you can't get the leaves. And it's true, kind of, it seems like for all these these little rare tender begonias. But So, um, so when you water them, like, how do you... Bottom. Oh, I see. Yeah. I see. What I bottom water them. I and that's not completely true. I mean, I have a really fine uh, watering can. Yesterday, I watered them from the top, um, but you know, I'm very mindful of water very slowly and uh, and to to not get the leaves wet. Um, that's but they ridiculous. do really like a, a lot a lot of humidity. Do you um, wait? You'll see a lot of people growing these, like those bio-orbs have become very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and you see a lot of folks growing. But these. but I thought the bio-orbs don't they have a mist or a they do, but the water doesn't actually sit. It, so it's a oh, I see. It's, it's like a, a mist, but it's not a spray. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they can they they want to absorb that humidity, but you don't you don't want to get water droplets to sit on that's, the leaves. That's absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, they're hard. They're pretty neat. I'm excited for them to get big. Cause yeah, and they like some of these little ones that have like the pink speckling are just really really cool. Um, but you can see like this one, it's, it's in a closed environment and even with that level of humidity, I'm still getting some leaf curling here and they're, they're tough. This is a, you know, I think this one's gotten a lot of play online lately. It's a really neat one called, uh, Begonia amphioxus. 
Uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right, but you can see the leaves have these really cool uh, little red spots on them. Yeah. But, uh, you know, my love of begonias has, has kind of taken off lately. They're, they're really fun to, it's a really big group of plants. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Move over into that. So you'll see, uh, for anybody that lives in the greater Los Angeles area, you know, this guy here, there's just a beautiful specimen of, of uh, this begonia at uh, Huntington Library. It's um, so funny because like when you feel this, it's it's like it's like paper or some sort yeah, of you know like yeah. it doesn't even look like it's it's real. Yeah, <laughs> it's real. I just and you've probably noticed kind of as we move along that I love pink plants and yeah. you know pink variegation is is really really cool to me. Yeah. And we didn't highlight it in my favorites, but I've got a couple of you know the pink princess, which is a you know continues to be a really popular plant that I love. Oh, how is your pink um, princess doing? Great. I feel like, yeah, I, I, have, I don't know, the, I have pink, a few of them. the pink princess and the white knight, I'm just like, uh, as much as I love them, it's like, I don't know, I feel like it's a 50 50 show. Oh, wow, yeah. I'm getting yeah, some really good pink lately. Oh, yes, yours is yours is amazing. Yeah, you have a really good, really good specimen of ops. Yeah, it's a nice dark one, too. Yeah. Yeah, I had that for a while, so it's kind of grown into itself and um, seems to be good, doing good. This is another really, really cool plant. Oh um, uh, yeah, the, the Pasicio Horacio Verde. Verde yep. Yeah, really, really pretty. Uh, neat variegation. I would say that that's. Uh, I think you got a good sampling of my favorites. I'm trying to think if there's anything that oh, we missed. Man. I mean, I could talk about you know obviously <laughs> they're all favorites at different points in time, but yeah, I think that those are some I, of the highlights right now. I do. Yeah, it does. It does seem that. Yeah, I'm sure your tastes changed over time as well and i think you've you've kind of definitely mentioned that that you went from you know some groups to others and then yeah. you're falling away from allocations currently <laughs> you allocations and you, um, but you've shared four i know, I know. <laughs> it's true um, i will say also i think the thing to remember is right now you're in my tropical plant room yeah um we don't need to to kind of tour it because it's a mess but my whole patio is cacti and succulents so, yeah and yeah i love cacti and succulents yeah. you know collecting rare cacti is really exciting and there's some really funky weird neat species and believe it or not they're significantly easier to grow here in southern california oh, yeah. I don't i'm sure to, you know ten things and you, you, know, yeah, you just yeah. stick them outside here and uh, they they do really well um, so, so, so that dubia, <laughs> that monstera dubia is, is something else, right? Um, wow, 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 wow. What a specimen. I mean, you know, I hope you guys really enjoyed that because, you know, I, I think this is one of the reasons why I love going around looking at different collections, you know, talking to different people, interacting with different people and growers and collectors. I mean, what an amazing specimen, right? Like, I never knew that Dubia can get like that, right? Like, yes, I've seen the small ones, um, so I knew what the patterns on their leaves were. I've seen mature Dubia. Um, where their leaves are huge and monstrous and in a totally funky shape. I've never seen a dubia like Jake's where it's it's basically coming out of its juvenile or adolescent uh, phase and starting um, or approaching the, the fenestrated stage. Jake has sent me some new pictures of his uh, dubia now and the newest leaves do have some fenestrations in them. So so that's super, super exciting. But I mean, yeah, you know, like if you guys have a dubia at home, a lot of your dubia are probably like my dubia where the leaves are really small. The plant itself is really small. Um, I mean, those leaves like <laughs> crazy, crazy. Um, yeah. <laughs> It it just it just blows my mind. Um, I know that I've gotten a lot of comments uh, from you guys when I showed the the sneak peek or the 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 overview of his collection, and, and you guys saw the dubia. I mean, ridiculous, right? Yeah, you know when you know when you see these amazing specimens, it's it's amazing because it just 
you know, it just redefines how you view or perceive the plant, right? Probably before you guys saw his dubia, when, you know, someone mentions a dubia or asks you to describe one, in your mind, it's, it's, it's different than what, you know, is show, shown in this video, right? Um, I mean, maybe it's, you know, maybe not for you, but it, that's definitely how it was for me. I always imagined the juvenile uh, dubia as, you know, something like this, as the entire plan. Each leaf is, you know, dit, 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 dit. Um, and yeah, and that's what you see on Google. That's what you mostly see, um, you know, on searches, on Facebook, on social media, on Instagram, right? Um, so in our mind, it's like, oh yeah, of course I know what a dubia looks like. And it's, you know, something <laughs> that's totally different from this massive monster that, that Jake has. So, so one of the takeaway points or one of the things that I appreciated um, that I, you know, I want you guys to notice as well is that uh, a big plant can come or live in a very small or, you know, the root can live in a very small pot. I mean, that plant is obviously ginormous and, and the roots are, you know, the roots are all based in a six inch pot. So, you know, I think that's, that's one thing to appreciate. Uh, I think another thing to appreciate is that the plant is growing on just a wooden board or a wooden plank, right? There's there's no moss layer, as you guys uh, probably notice. It's it's just you know plant on on wood. Uh, you know my plants are I you I do use you know moss poles or moss planks, so there is a layer of moss in between the the wood and the plant. I think that some people uh, believe or think that the moss is providing some sort of like nutrition to the plant, and I can tell you that's that's not true. That's you know that's that's not what the function of the moss is. The the moss, if you're thinking about whether or not to add moss or not to your board or you know, yeah, board or plank. Um, you may want to consider what the, the utility of that moss is. Okay, so, so one is probably, I guess, probably the least important is probably the aesthetic, right? Some people like the, the moss look. Um, it may be more jungly or, you know, more, I don't know, mossy, <laughs> right? So, so I think one is aesthetic. Um, if you like that look, then go for it. If you don't, then that's fine. Uh, two is that if you're in the habit of of misting uh, your area roots, um, the moss does help retain that moisture for longer than just a plain wooden board, right? Um, so Jake doesn't use moss, but he doesn't really do anything for for his board, right? He's not a, a frequent like mister, so he just kind of lets the plant be. And and then probably the most important factor is just um, if you are planning or foresee that you'll be sort of like removing the plant um, in any you know reasonable time frame um, having that moss layer does help with removal let me say anything else i want to say about the dubia uh, besides like wow yeah that's <laughs> uh, i think i think that's it um so yeah another another episode in the books uh we are we are winding down the Jake series, guys. So I, I hope you guys uh, are enjoying it so far. Um, if you again, if you haven't seen the previous episodes, this this is not, you know, this is a series that you 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 want to watch if you're a rare Aroid collector. Um, so yeah, so we have a few episodes coming up, and then um, yeah, we'll say goodbye to Jake, and I think we'll say hello to our next series. Till next time, happy planting.